Welcome everybody, welcome back to the Tomb of Illumination. This video uh, is going to go straight to the public. A lot of these videos go on my Patreon. They're too revealing for the public. Most of the public cannot handle reality. So, those who come to my site, Patreon site, obviously want to delve deeper. They come with an open mind. So I find that a waste of time to put things on uh, YouTube. Um, and because I'm not part of the club, they, they want to shut me down. See, a lot of these 30 sites are all part of the club. They take, they, they just, it's all talk. They take you to the boundary, but you're not allowed to climb over the fence and see reality. This is what I found with a lot of sites. I'm thinking, you've gone right to the fence, mate, but you're not getting over it. And I think, why? And they've got thousands and thousands and thousands of subscribers. So I understand why. It's all fixed. Go look at mine. There's only about 8,000. It goes nowhere. Like in the last two months, I've probably had 10 subscribers. So that doesn't matter though, because I'll, I'll just deal with my Patreon page. But I've got to put one up on Facebook. Um, it's to do with this Will Duffy guy. I've just put another comment on one of his videos and they always get deleted because they know I know what I'm talking about. I'm not on their list of ignorant flat earthers. They want to continue debating with. It's all, it's all part of the show. It's all about money, I think. And keeping you control, controlling the mind. So they bring everyone to their site so they can control your thoughts. Only go so far. They don't want you climbing the fence. If you want to climb the fence, check out my videos or come over to Patreon. Um, I'm going to go over why and how the flat earth, the, the 24 hour sun works in Antarctica again. And uh, I'm just going to make some references to old Leonardo da Vinci. I just got this through the post. Look at the size of it. Ridiculous size. You think you're going to get a real book. Look at the size of the thing. You know, the Vitruvian man. See there that's why i'm very bad out there right right through here this is just a few all his information is esoteric he's hidden it like tesla did in a lot of his work what they tell you about the vitruvian man is just a load of garbage they connected to this um that architect back in the day vitruvius or whatever the name was uh about uh, ratios and stuff but um, now what Le Leonardo is showing here this is like a world first for you guys okay he's got his arms out straight there right with displaying equilibrium balance and those that have been following me understand this equilibrium and balance in the the earth system the seasonal change at the point of the Sun's crossover that is where the sun and the moon move laterally in balance without any declination. It's referred to as the sun standing still. Still goes around the earth every day, but doesn't decline, ascend or descend in declination. It goes down. It, it, the sun always follows the ecliptic plane, you see. He's representing the, the ecliptic plane. Ecliptic plane, there's only ecliptic plane on the flat earth model. There's no ecliptic plane on a globe. Where's the plane? I'll refer to it as ecliptic, but yeah, don't highlight the fact that it's supposed to be a plane very often, do they? There's no plane. There's only a plane on the flat earth system that's up here on the plane at the top of the central vortex, the 2D plane, um, which is basically here. That's the 2D plane of the planets x suns there's no females no moons in here all the moons and the stars are in the vortex the 3d this all gets the whole thing gets projected into our night sky we can see it all at night as signs okay the real sun back here we get that image right here in the tropical gap here celestial tropical gap basically from there it is projected onto these concave mirrored parabolic reflectors something else on mr leonardo it shows us in his drawings 
don't don't believe what they write about this stuff okay they're common people who have no idea what leonardo is on about or any other ancient philosopher philosopher it's a study of wisdom they know they're wise men very wise men unlike those who are doing the descriptions here okay so anyone you take your protractor and you find out what's what's the angle of his other arms there the two on the angle it's 23.4 degrees okay that's the ecliptic plane the ecliptic plane up and in or down and out with within the vortex the sun will come it'll shrink down expands and contracts over the year the central vortex of creation we cannot get into we cannot see it we're inside this field here okay that's a slice of the pie that's it overall if you just look down on it you see the central north smaller a lot bigger out here but everything is relative to the observer so it's always you have to draw look at it this way as equal but overall if you could see from outside the universe look in the northern hemisphere is very very small and everywhere out here is a slice of that center north rotation so it ends up a bit like this there's your center north you can say there's your slice of the pie and there's your southern image but we can't tell this difference but it all equates in physics it's a three to two ratio there has to be an uneven system for the system to be perpetual keep moving otherwise if it found equilibrium like this things stop as Leonardo mentions did he mention that no in the Bible the Sun stands still okay now we can't exist like that we do for two or three days though so which is quite interesting quite interesting because normally with magnetism if you find equilibrium the magnetic field ceases to exist um, but there it's a, it's another story because we're still we're still dealing with the sun's analemma the magnetic cycle of the earth is perpetual it's always going like that even though the sun and the moon find this resting state as they're crossing over here okay resting state before they start going down in declination or up in declination like that this is the Vitruvian man what he's what he's drawing here these are his feet and there's your considers the Nile or the Jordan River or whatever there's two sun and a lemmas one in each hemisphere and the feet touch the banks of the Jordan or described in the Bible let's understand this equilibrium what um, and the legs will be 23.4 degrees and what else have we got here uh, well, that's on my patreon they'll understand all that won't give it to you yet they, you won't understand that um, you wouldn't understand that um, the system here and there's another one uh, <coughs> that's it there and there is another little sketch where he's showing us the, uh, the the flexing of the ecliptic plane again and he's drawn it as an image like this he's got this mechanism up like this in a base and a line coming down here with the sun on it not that you know it's the sun and there's this circle you see as this lowers the sun moves out this way as it rises the sun moves back this way that's exactly what's happening between the ecliptic plane here up and at the seasonal change and declination down and out up and in now the big secret is um, and you know, he's, look, he's even drew, draw, drawn the declination there, the curve. 
Don't, don't believe what they've written here. It's just garbage. They've got no idea. It's all about declination. It's enough of that book. <coughs> now, The Untold Secret, and you've got old Jason Bashir out there telling a spinning big story about the Phoenix Rising, and all these followers are just totally blind, like blind mice. You have to understand the Phoenix Rising is connected with the seasonal change the magnetic phase shift between the two hemispheres because that is an overlay northern hemisphere southern hemisphere it's a duality they overlay and they come apart well the date they come apart pop apart like this is the 17th of October every year see you have the northern hemisphere up here is your Arctic center north southern hemisphere down here 66.6 .6 degrees there this field moves all the way up to here and and then moves all the way back again to pop out and separate the separation is the 17th of october every year this is the phoenix rising the duality the ego with the two two heads facing each opposite directions because at this stage what happens is the sun splits there's a sun in the southern hemisphere and a sun in the northern hemisphere and this is why we get the sun move beyond 66.6 .6 degrees and have your 24 hour sun around Antarctica because it's a mirrored it's a mirrored effect going on, um, but there's, there's a mirrored effect going on all year long because um, this, this is your declination that in here, right? Down and out, up and in. You're always getting this, this whatever this image here is, plastered out here. Well, not exactly up there because, let's get rid of that analemma. They all get cast back to the observer. So they're not out right out there. The other thing is, you don't get sunlight further than um, about 85 degrees or something, or 88 degrees south, because of this system. It's all projected back to the observer. You, you can't get the sun um, on, the, on the mirror, the parabolic mirror, it, it's, it all gets projected back. It all has to be projected back to the observer. So let's say you observe that. It all comes back, cast off the mirror back to the observer. So you get past a certain point, you, you're beyond that reflective parabolic, because you need the atmosphere for the parabolic projection. And if you go too far south, you, you, you've come away from that projection, the images, right? And this is the other thing about Leonardo da Vinci. He's got the same thing. He's even drawn an image almost identical to an image I put up years ago in regards to parabolic projections and images. Let's see if we can find one here. Uh, well, that's one, but you probably find it hard to see. Uh, <clears throat> Well, there's one there. I'm not sure if you'll see it. But but those narrating or, you know, writing up, telling you what the pictures are, uh, do actually say, um, refer to the parabolic mirror. His mirrors. Parabolic mirrors. So he, he knows, he knew, all the wise men knew, of this parabolic projection you get on both, both these arcs here. Right? <clears throat> and you know the height depends on this declination but you've got to understand this the popping effect from after this date goes beyond the 66.6 .6 degrees and you know the you know the antarctic treaty involves 66.6 .6 degrees doesn't it or thereabouts 
and they're now telling you the South Pole, the South Pole is 66.6 degrees. It's all comical stuff when you delve deep and you know what you're talking about. So, <clears throat> this is why you get the sun beyond and circling you in the, uh, after the 21st of December. So, how can we do all this, uh, Uh, right, so what you need to realize is the sun going around the black hole here is going around the, the flat earth system, around the tropical gap around here, right? It, it's exploded, an exploded image. That here is all for science, right? So the sun's going around in here, okay? So if the sun's going around in here, like it comes around this way actually, it goes around like that, Uh, <clears throat> uh, the parabolic mirror of projection is sending the sun around this way. It comes out of here, out of the south. All our celestial bodies in the south come, in the southern hemisphere, come out of the, the, the south there, the opposite to there. That's why it's called the Arctic, and it's called the Anti-Arctic, Antarctic. It's the mirrored end. This is, why, this is called Polaris, and this is called Polaris Australis. <laughs> okay, so it comes out, goes around like this. But after sixty, after this day here, this it's separate. You've got a separate image. It pops right out, pops right out, and goes around the observer. But it doesn't matter where he is around here. Like this, Will Duffy mentioned that. Oh, Lindsay Harris only mentioned this position here. What if we land here, here, or here? Well, it's all the same because it's all mirrored. It's a no-brainer. They say they can't even think of that. They don't. They don't think. Everything is projected from here out. You get the sun here. The sun is going to be out, out here, around here, around that man. It's also going to be sort of out and around here. This other dude up here. Well, anywhere up here. It, it's two. It's separated. What's another reference of that? Oh, in the Bible, it says. Um, I'll show you another image here. This thing here. See, this is only stuff my patrons will understand because they're open-minded, you see. Most people out there on YouTube are in La La Land. The Sabu Disc. No, no one out there in La La Land understands all this stuff. I explain it all on my Patreon. Okay, the Sabu Disc. In the Bible it mentions the earth rolled up as a scroll and unrolls like a scroll. Now to understand that, you have to have this thing awake. And if this thing's awake, you need to understand that the earth is not physical. Nothing is physical in our realm. So at the seasonal change, when the southern hemisphere goes up there, the entire southern hemisphere shrinks, compacts, contracts, and goes back out again. Just like your heart does. Just like this vortex does, because that vortex determines our realm, in and out. This is, this is vertical, we're horizontal. Creation is perpendicular to the created realm. The whole southern hemisphere star rotation, everything moves north, moves back again. But once again, you've got to understand, everything is relative to the observer. It's hard. Unless you understand the whole picture, it's hard. So in the Bible, it's telling you, the mountains will move out of place. And they move back again. That's exactly what's happening, because the world is not physical. You have to understand that. Contraction, expansion. It's all written in the Bible. The Bible is a book of physics. It can't be faulted. This 17th of October is 40 days and 40 nights after the day of creation. What's the day of creation? What does it say in the book? The day of creation was the sixth day. He rested on the seventh. 
So this actually is from the 6th day, 6th of September. That's the day of creation. But it's the 7th day. 7th day, because you go back to the 31st of August. The 6th day of creation was the day uh, the Bible talks about where it was uh, full moon. Not that you'll find it anywhere in there. Full moon uh, in Pisces. Full moon in Pisces. What, what is this all about? It recedes back again. And you get here this overlay. What do they call it? The Fisicopiscus. Because it's that certain time of the year. That's what you want. Well, we want it's been and gone and the sun will be in virgin mary there's mary the moon and pisces there's the sun and the virgin with getting it on with her for 15 or 16 days before she gives birth the moon gives birth in pisces all described in the bible but all broken down through my patreon site tomb of illumination So, you can't debunk any of this. If they want to debate me, they can, but they're afraid, you see, because I know, and no other flat earther knows, so they don't want me on their sites informing hundreds of thousands of people, do they? No, they don't want you to know the truth. Um, there's more of this information on the uh, symposium, Plato's Symposium. I'll give you a hint on that one. Uh, I think I haven't got reading glasses on, but um, I think if you if you read uh, what have we got here? Uh, maybe I should get my reading glasses. Oh, there they are. Where should we start? Oh, you start here. Start at um, 189. Symposium. Yeah, okay, Symposium 189. Or 189E. 189E. And read through to... Um, through to 192... C. Okay. Check that out. I'll start off reading a little bit. First of all, I must explain the real nature of man and the change which it has undergone. For in the beginning, we were nothing like we are now. For one thing, the race was divided into three. That is to say, besides the two sexes, male and female, blah, 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 blah. Now, don't get confused. Because it's uh, esoteric, you're going to get confused uh, and start just thinking of, um, you know, the, the gay guys, transvestites, because he's talking about male and female, then he goes into the hermaphrodite, and you're just going to think of the gay man. There's a, there's a little bit of that, but it goes beyond that, okay? You've got to understand the whole religious story is about man who is of dual He's male and female. When he comes in the physical world, he loses his feminine aspect. It's within him. It's like the spiritual side of man, hidden within him. And he has to find this lost Lilith. Okay? And it goes into Adam and Eve story. But that's more in physics. Um, so this, this, because the whole world, realm is duality. It's all about male and female. The strong force and the weak force. The southern hemisphere is the weak force. The northern hemisphere is the strong force. And when they come together like this, in here, this uh, magic spot, is where man finds his lost Lilith, becomes the hermaphrodite in this area here. Okay? The eye of Ra or Horus or whatever. Physicopiscus, 
It's all about the moon. And she's the female. She represents the feminine aspect of our whole realm. She's the mother of creation. And the son is the father. Or well, they've got to understand the difference between this black hole and the sun. The sun is on the horizon of the black hole, so they are one, but two. The father, the black hole, the sun is the sun. Sun, and then the mother, the moon. Who is Mary? Um, okay, so you've got to understand how the, the earth rolls up like a scroll and unrolls. It's the overlay. The southern, southern hemisphere is described in the Bible as uh, earthquakes, referring to subduction. North doesn't go anywhere, stays there. South goes down, down into a mente, down here. All the lost, not lost souls, but it's a long story, but you have to get on my Patreon for that one. Uh, okay, so understanding the flexing of the ecliptic plane, down and out, up and in. All governed by the, the plane up here. Okay. More details on that in my Patreon. The ecliptic plane is there, so you've got to imagine that like the wings of a bird up they flap up and down, but it's all the way around, so you can think of it as like a jellyfish. It flutters along. And like a world first here, no one no one knew this, okay? You've got to understand what the Phoenix Rising means, and it's and it's connected to man's spirituality too. It's about this place here. Okay? Uh, the two sun and the lemmas. So there's two celestial cycles, one in each hemisphere. Okay. Understand the overlay. And when they overlay like this, because that, that, the southern hemisphere is moving around the north all the time. The north turns, doesn't move anywhere naturally. This revolves all the way around the north. So there's always a projection out to the cycle. See, it moves around like this. What was I getting at then? Uh, so there's always an, an image. You're always getting your own image out here. The image is always projected out. What was I going to say about that? Uh, yeah, so they're, they're going like this together like cogs. And it just keeps turning. Well, no, that's not right. What When you're videoing in star trail photography, you are getting, if you're direct south from in the southern hemisphere, you are catching a circle. And that circle represents the, the central vortex up here. There's your circle, a permanent circle of stars in the vortex. You're not filming a star per se, you're, you're, you're catching the circle, the, the vortex. Okay, that's why you've got a circle and you've got all these stars in it, but the stars aren't doing the full circle. They only come into your horizon and pass through and on their way out. Okay, you never see them, you can't follow one like this unless it's uh, no, you can't in the Southern Hemisphere. You can't. There's no circumpolar stars. Only in the North. Because they all just go around the North. They don't wander off. These ones do. They'll, they'll come into your horizon and go out. So with the star tracker though, you catch one of those stars and you can film it. Move all the way around and out. You can have two cameras. One star trail, one tracker. And you, you're watching the circle all the time. The circle doesn't go anywhere. But you can track a star that wanders all the way out. That's going nearly 15 degrees per hour. That's going, uh, well, the circle's actually going 15 degrees per hour. But the stars won't be. They're slightly less because they're doing this S-curve cycle in here. The vortex is going 15 degrees per hour. This is what turns the whole sun around the black hole. But this, the sun is just doing a direct a, a circle back in here. But the stars are doing this S curve because it's going up and up and down in the vortex. Down overnight, up during the day. Or vice versa. <coughs> Lost my line of thought again now. <coughs> um, yeah. 
So, yeah, so that, that system's moving around here all the time. It, it re revolves. And this takes you right back to physics. They all, they all know the difference between revolve and rotate. They want to keep it specific. They knew that this revolves around there. <clears throat> yeah, like meshing cogs all the way around here, meshing cogs. Shh. So it goes in and out over the season. So you live over here, it's in and out. You live over here, it's in and out. Every man is on a meridian line, north to south. Okay? Whether it be there, 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 or there, he gets this. He gets this image. It's all he's seeing because outside a direct meridian line, north to south, you're just seeing all the stars warping away. Everything's warping away. Everything just starts warping away. If you're not in your direct arc, north to south, everything's just warping away. As it comes through this gap, the the gap where we see Orion's belt come through at a certain time of the year, right? Like now, most of the year, nine months of the year, through that gap, <laughs> understanding those represent three stars in the north: Polaris, Sigma Octantis. But it's, it's all it's it's expanded, isn't it? It's expanded. It's not going to be as tight as the, as they are here in the north. The three star system be separated. Okay, understanding the uh, the the Southern Cross, the crux. You got the cross, and then you got the false cross. In the north, you've got the little bear and the big bear, or Ursa Major. What's the other one they call them? The, can't remember. You've got the two there, you've got the two here. They're, they're mirrored. It's expanded and parabolically mirrored projections. This guy knew all about it. Go study his diagrams. Oh, you probably won't find much. You're probably better off just sticking, sticking with me. <laughs> okay. This is what we get... 24 hour sun out south, okay? All the way around you. For a couple of weeks. And uh, and then it starts wandering back in, up again. Okay? That's when you've got to revert back to the, uh, the pyramid idea. What, that's what the pyramid's trying to show. It's there for to show us. <coughs> Declination, back up again. The sun coming all the way back up. Hello. That's what you want. In the Physicopiscus. Before it starts. You've got this other system here then. But it goes really deep. It's not easy to understand flat earth. Okay. It's quite tricky. But I can guide you if you ask me questions. on Through Patreon. <coughs> I can help you out. But you've got to understand there's an exploded inverted image of what's in here and you're only getting a slice of the pie understand that after this date so you've got uh in the bible they mention this seventh day was a day of rest but that day of rest seventh day is the sixth of september the first week of spring it's all about spring okay our spring southern spring And there's a lot more to that. Understand the ecliptic plane. That's what it looks like. There's your Milky Way that goes across it, comes across it, then goes down to the guts. So these are two ends of the Milky Way. Right there's the bulge, the gigantuan you see out here at night, the white light behind it, facing the other way, divided the night from the from day. So. The Milky Way, it, it divides it, doesn't it? It's like, it's like a boomerang, apparently. The big bulge is in here. 
and uh, so the light, uh, the sun light is seen back here in the, in the Milky Way. That's the sun back in here, the sun we see at the end of the Milky Way, at the end of the pipeline. So it's divided the day from the night because there's the day over here. There's the night over there, isn't it? It's not the Milky Way's not facing both ways. Going to go. So it's like a straw in a cup. This is why they uh, tell you the story about the uh, the um, manger straw, straw in the manger, straw long trough as a manger. Donkeys refer to donkeys and a horse or a colt and a donkey. You know what a straw is? You can blow through a straw, you can suck through a straw, same thing going on. That's on my Patreon. A lot to take in here, but just, just keep watching it. You'll click. Watch it over and over and over and over and over again. So thanks for watching. I know what I'm talking about. I probably don't express it very well, so... You know. If you get over here, you can ask me questions. Or maybe I can do a specific video on one topic. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you're interested. And uh, put a likes up. Thank you. Put the word out there, Mr. Duffy. Stop playing around.